are tuned in to Gila Nehemia, Sacred Erotic Poetry, Sacred Sexuality, and Ascension podcast. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for those of you who've been following me for a while or those of you who just came upon this today um, or any day that you um, <clears throat> listen to this. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Today is the 26th of uh, March, uh, a special day. Um, We've been having a lot of rain and really cold, like icy weather in Israel. And today is really like sunny and starting to get warm. So I feel like this is a turning point um, for many of us, not just in the weather, but in our lives. So before we get into today's podcast, um, let's take a three deep breaths together and set an intention. I would um, invite you to, if you're driving, to not do this, but if you are at home or in any uh, sacred space to write, light a candle and um, just to really connect to yourself at this time during this podcast session, just to really um, feel the energies for yourself and connect into your own wisdom. So let's take three deep breaths now. Um, we will hold for three and release for three. We're calling in our guides, our ancestors, God's words, universe our power animals, our um, brothers and sisters in, um, in galaxies known and unknown to us, in the Palladians, the Andromedans, the Syrians, um, the Lyrans, the um, people of Lemuria, of Atlantis, to assist us now as we um, move through these energies of the last quarter moon into the new moon, really letting go of anything that needs to be um, transmuted and worked through to truly come into our full authenticity and, um, and our whole sovereign self. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, and so it is. So yes, this is in preparation of the new moon coming up on uh, April 1st. I am... Um, I hope to have a new moon free uh, quantum healing session. And, and in all of these podcasts now, I'm going to be doing quantum healing at the end of every um, transmission. So stay tuned till the end um, to hear it uh, just all divinely coming through. Um, so as I feel whatever needs to be shared will be shared. And um, in addition to that, you, this is the last quarter moon, so you may be feeling these, um, you know, growing pains of, uh, as I said before, we're just really like walking into the new story. Um, in my last podcast, if you haven't heard it, you can uh, listen to that episode. And, um, and so anything that needs to go or any old feelings of unworthiness or things that have not been working out in your life or things that you may not have sh shone a light on um, may be coming to the surface right now or probably is coming to the surface to be healed, to be released, uh, to be transmuted, to be transformed. Um, and again, as I said last week, or at, le at least in my newsletter, I'm not sure if I said it in this podcast, I said it in my newsletter that whomever you may be releasing, or maybe even it is an identity of yourself that you're releasing, um, you know, I'm encouraging you not to vilify it, not to... Um, you know, it's so easy to point a finger at somebody or something or even something in ourselves and um, be hard on ourselves or, you know, um, <clears throat> get angry at it. Um, and, you know, really the practice is just to be. And there may be feelings of anger. You know, there may be feelings of um, disrespect or distrust, you know, and to just allow them to be released, you know, release them, express them, um, acknowledge them. And realize like this is something maybe that you have been um, allowing to happen in your life and now you are not you're setting a clearer boundary to release that um, or you are just realizing that this is no longer serving you to be in this way and I feel like um, 
it's a really important point because it really does stem down into deeper senses of unworthiness of what we are feel we were required to do probably to obtain love um i have been feeling this deeply and i feel like you know collectively from listening to my clients and you know reading various things and just connecting to the energies like this is something that we've been carrying for a long time and it's time to release it you know and really to live in oneness means that there's no separation and even though they might that might seem like a like a challenging task or an overwhelming task to really um love everybody and to release um, and to forgive um, and to see it for what it is, but not necessarily to engage, you know, and I feel like I used to think, oh, if it's, you know, loving everyone, one love, you know, by Bob Marley or something, um, you know, we, we love everybody and, you know, like it's all in harmony and it may or may not be in harmony, you know, disharmony is also a state of being. So um, the key is really being in harmony with yourself. Um, and I feel like that is really important. You know, sometimes we keep the peace because we don't want to um, rock the equilibrium that we think we are maintaining. But um, in essence, we are not, we're not acknowledging the chaos or the um, imbalance within ourselves. You know, it could be our emotions. It could be our diet. It could be our way of looking at things. It could be our usage of the phone. You know, it could be um, our um, inability to go outside because it's really uh, cold and wintry out, you know, and so we don't get enough sun. Um, so there's a number of different imbalances that we um, quote unquote put up with um, so the question is, how can we move into balance? And I feel like that's a question we all need to ask ourselves. What will make us feel more balanced? And sometimes we think of situations that are challenging us, but in reality, it is, or in the truth of all things, um, it's within us, right? You know, everything is within us. The, the kingdom of heaven is within um, I, I say that many times in many of my podcasts because that's what I truly believe. And if there's something that isn't working, there's something within us that isn't um, shining the light on where there is a disharmony, where there is, you know, there isn't a balance or where we have not accepted a situation so that we can move on. Or sometimes um, I feel it can also be um, where we are not allowing the true dream to come in because we're too afraid of it happening. And um, and that just came to me recently. And I felt like, you know, as I said earlier, it's easy to walk away. And then, you know, it's much harder to have deeper conversations. You know, in my previous podcast, deeper conversations that are like um, really open to way discussions. And also to truly just allow you know, the onion to unfold and to get to its core because, you know, sometimes it's hard to have those difficult conversations or it's hard to, you know, it may not even be a conversation with another person. It can be just a conversation with ourselves. Like, wait, what do I really want? What would really make me happy? What what do I feel could possibly happen? And I, I'm afraid to visualize it, you know, and believe in that dream. Um, you know, it's this... Um, I don't know if it's doubt or it's just this, you know, pattern of uh, disappointment that may have been happening and you feel like that this is the only exit and, you know, really there are infinite ways to reach your desires um, and infinite ways for your highest journey. So like, you know, when we can really allow ourselves to see that there are infinite ways and allow in all possibilities and allow that to happen. I mean, I feel like <clears throat> we may know this mentally. But to truly embrace that is, you know, at least for me, it's a challenge. It's like, whoa, can that really happen? And even even though I'm sure many of us have seen these things happen, you know, in very short amount of time, in a very short amount of time, like where these like, you know, these like obstacles suddenly moved away because we believed that it could. And so if we could if we could really harness that power within us to shift our way of thinking and to um, sit with that challenge that you're having, whatever that is, 
It could be a, just a challenge within yourself where you feel like, you know, um, you're still people pleasing or you're um, still having negative feelings about yourself, you know, whether it's your finances, your relationships, your body, your um, your time, uh, you know, what whatever that is, you know, to really sit with it and to be with it and to say, you know, to, to affirm that that can change in a moment if I believe it can change. You know, I have um, I have a social media manager and she had re, um, what's the word? You know, we kind of um, shifted the, the thumbnails of my of our, my YouTube videos about affirmation. So I was listening to a few of them as I was um, changing the thumbnails. And, um, and I, I, and I, when I started with affirmations, it really changed my life and I, and I still do them. I mean, I'm, I do gratitude a little bit more than I do affirmations, but I also do affirmations. Um, maybe not to that extent that I was like totally into it for a few months, but I'm coming back to it because I know how powerful it is. And I know how, like when I, um, I truly commit to that way of being, and I can see it, even if I have no idea how to get there, I completely trust and surrender into the divine, into the energies, into my own higher self and wisdom, you know, really changes happen so fast. Uh, but they don't, it's not like, it's like sometimes we are so focused on what we want in our physical reality, we forget that we are actually the co-creators of our life. And what I mean by that. Um, is that when we can decide and commit that that is what we want in our life and we will not give that up, then things happen. Um, I remember earlier this week, um, after the the last podcast episode, I had a really deep discussion um, with my daughter and some of it spilled out into the group. And, you know, it's really just about... Um, truly connecting to our own emotions, as I said earlier today, and expressing them in a deep, deep way. And, um, you know, and, and being honest with ourselves and, and honestly, you know, taking care of our own equilibrium. And um, I want to say that many young people are, you know, young teenagers, you know, like, um, or even younger, are so aware uh, because of us, because of the energies, because they are star seeds, um, because they have this, you know, extraterrestrial knowledge and they're sharing it with whomever they can, I feel like we um, were asked to honor them and honor ourselves and fully respect the children. Um, because I feel that, and and this came up with a uh, with somebody else earlier this week too. You know, it's like I'm I've always been committed to children. I was a teacher. Um, I love children. I love um, working with children. I have my challenges like anyone else, but there is something about um, you know my own inner child. I love. I I just have this real kind of um, connection to the innocent, the truth, the um, honesty that children can bring out that sometimes as adults we ha we don't even see because we've been, you know, socialized. And even though we're, you know, going back into that authenticity, the children are actually helping us to come into that in its full form. And as we can um, both grow with them and move with them and allow them to flourish and, and also give them the boundaries that we need in order for us to um, be at peace. Um, I feel like we're moving into a new way of being. And, um, and all of this is to say is that the way that I know I was taught and, and I feel is still being taught in the schools um, or even in some families is like, you listen to me. And I, and I feel like it, it's gotta be a two way street and, um, and there has to be full respect. And there also has to be full knowledge of what um, each other can, you know, can handle. It's like any other relationship. Um, and I didn't feel that way with my parents. And I, um, I feel like my children might have some of that, you know, um, but I'm not sure. I have to talk to them deeply about it. Though I, I, I do think that um, 
you know, and even our dog, you know, like even our, and even just people that I meet, you know, just like fully like acknowledging you are your own being. I am my own being. We can coexist together. Um, we don't have to be close or we can have a close relationship, but either way there are, um, you know, there's a code that we can desire to acknowledge and open up with each other if we want to go there. So that's what I'm trying to say in this podcast. Like, what is the code? You know, we I think that it's always an enigma. Relationships are an enigma because, you know, there's no real set way to do it. And everyone has like some, you know, do it this way if you want to have a relationship. Do it that way. How do you deal with your children? You know, there's all sorts of paths, you know, but I feel like the paths are really within your own truth and honesty of yourself and the truth of honest and honesty of another and um, truly acknowledging yourself um, in that relationship because everyone is different, whether it's, it doesn't matter, like it could be a child, it could be a coworker, it could be someone that you love, it could be your animal, like it's every relationship is different. And when you can approach it that way and, um, and not give a one size fits all. Um, I feel like um, you're going to be able to use techniques because you know that you've used them before with that person or with another, and you know that that is a truth. And I guess like um, that's what's coming out right now is like, what is a truth? And the truth is always wrapped up in kindness, in love, in compassion, in gratefulness. Um, because no matter whom or, um, you know, no, no matter the being that you're dealing with, whether even if it's yourself, um, it's, it's always to treat the situation with kindness, you know, because there either is a lesson to be learned or there's transformation that's happening. Either way, there's something that's happening for you. And to acknowledge that and to really be in it and be like, whoa, something's happening for me. I'm present with it. This person, this being may or may not be able to be present with me in this transformation, but this is happening. And um, and we're growing together. And we may continue to grow together. We may or may not continue to grow, to get, grow together, though you know, allowing that tree to flourish with all its flowers and leaves and building those roots within yourself, you know, that that when we did the intention of sovereignty, it's like we are sovereign beings. We get to decide what we want to do. We get to co-create our own lives. People come in and out just like the branches of the trees. They grow with us all the way to the top or some just grow with us and they stop. And, um, and it all makes up the um, the multidimensionality of ourselves. So I feel like when we can look at our lives in that way, and you know, I see the word toxic a lot, and I'm just like, wait a second. And I used to use it too, and I'm just like, wait a second, you know, really. And I know I I, I know that I've acknowledged this in myself. If I've had any toxic toxic relationships or toxicity, I've had it in myself. You know, it's not about just the other person or the other being that has been in your life. You know, I was watching something about um, dogs and it was um, it was a dog that had been in a very challenging situation, lost a leg. And, you know, then the dog trainer trained the dog to not bite other people. Um, and, um, you know, it's it's like it's a similar situation when you're in a very challenging environment. That's how you know to behave. And you don't really know anything else and you're not trusting. And as soon as you have a safety net, you know, you have a safe way of being and you can trust your own instincts and not always react, then you behave differently. And I feel like we're no different, you know, like it's it's about that that safety. It's about that love. It's about that um, security that we have in ourselves and then being able to trust our own intuition and, and actually behaving and being in love. You know, it's, it's not an easy process and it's, there are always going to be bumps on the way and there are going to be triggers and things that happen. Though I feel that if that is your desire, you know, that is your wisdom that's coming in, you know, then that's going to happen. Um, and I also wanted to mention, you know, we have, I talk about sexuality in the title of this and I don't always 
discuss sexuality, but I feel like sexuality also has its darkness. You know, sexuality has so many levels and layers. And when we can allow all of that into our lives, into our consciousness, into our fantasies, um, and into um, our conversations with our partners or people that we are, um, you know, intimate with, we can we can transform and we can transcend. It's a tool, you know, like everything is a tool of transformation. Everything in our earthly being can be transformed into higher consciousness. I had a conversation with someone um, yesterday about light and about water. He works with all of these types of things to um, open up the mind, to, you know, uh, open up into um, more light in the in the body by um, absorbing more light from the from the environment um, and also using better tools when working with computers so that we can absorb more good you know light that's good for us rather than the electromagnetic um, uh, frequencies of machines that are not always good for us you know or um, artificial light and it was a really interesting concept and I I was I was you know I'm, I'm still fascinated by it because I am fascinated by the light the moonlight the sunlight you know all of um, all of the different energies of light and the light within our hearts and in ourselves because I feel like all of these things can heal us and um, and things can be used as a tool like you know machines can be used as a tool as long as we don't abuse them as long as we don't get obsessed with them you know because we are expecting something or you know how how do we again we're walking into balance you know we're walking into peace does it is it creating peace in our lives is it moving us into more chaos and anxiety you know this is something we're going to have to gauge every moment, you know, having that awareness, having that consciousness that um, everything um, has its place and everything can be transformed as well as allowing ourselves to truly express who we are, what we're feeling and not denying any part of ourselves. I feel like this is a really big step also within my own life, you know, is to, um, to not, to not push it down because it's uncomfortable because there's so many things that are uncomfortable and, um, and there are definitely ways, um, to deal with them, but first and foremost, you know, dealing with them, um, acknowledging them perhaps on our own, you know, everyone's different, you know, that's my process. I need to like acknowledge it, you know, sit with it, um, simmer with it for a while before it might come out, especially if it's something like delicate and emotional. Um, sometimes it might just come out, but I don't want to suppress it and have it blow up, which sometimes I do. I'm going to just be honest about that. And, um, and, and when there are the blow ups, there are the blow ups, you know, it's like, okay, that, that had to, that had to come that way. And, you know, maybe I had been trying to share that for a long time and it never actually um, got a hold, you know, and, and there's still a part of me that feels like I'm, the anger is a transformative creative energy um, and I allow it to be released, you know, and I still continue to find ways of how can I um, transform, transform the anger, you know, how can I utilize it? Uh, better, um, you know, so it's it's a constant, it's a constant um, work for me. Um, so I feel that all of us, um, I feel, you know, collectively is the energy that I'm feeling at the moment is that all of us have uh, places and spaces that um, we can still put a light on. And, you know, as the material world is changing, maybe there, um, you know, we're spending more money on this, this, or we're creating um, some aspect of our lives that is in, uh, in still in the darkness, it still needs to be fully realized. Um, look inwards and, and see what can be um, released, what is being suppressed. Where, where do you find yourself being, becoming anxious? Um, where do you find that you're not um, expressing yourself clearly enough uh, or being honest with yourself fully 
for yourself, um, even before it goes into another person or another um, connection or discussion, you know, where, where can you even, by, by being who you are, um, connect more to the energies that are uh, in the natural world, you know, whether it's the uh, trees or the sunshine or the moonlight, um, h- how is it affecting you? How is it keeping you in balance or, or you're feeling imbalanced? Um, I feel like these are, you know, self-inquiry has been something that I've been focusing on um, in previous episodes and I wanted to bring that back even in our own sexuality and our relationships um, a relationship with ourselves or how we define our sexual sexual beings um, how are we using that energy energy to be creative and to be transformative how are we using the love of ourselves because all of this comes back to self-love how can we love ourselves more deeply and accept all of the various fantasies and um and things that turn us on to open up to um, more creative work because really that is the source the creation is a source of our life force energy so how do we tap into that more how do we find pleasure in in what we eat and what we do and the way we dress and the way we look at our bodies and the way we hold ourselves you know how could we um exercise that more both in a physical way and in a mental and emotional way um, to truly love who we are and relish it Um, you know without you know it's really hard because because of all the constructs and the advertisements in that in our outside world but to just look inside you know to be closing our eyes and being like okay you know this is this is the earthly form that I have. I'm here to take care of it. Like I take care of my car, I take care of my house. I'm here to take care of it. I'm here to nourish it. I'm here to, um, you know, love it deeply because it is, it is my, it is the form that I use in order to, um, to move through the world. And I don't, I don't mean like in the way that you show up for yourself you know that could be a part of it but it's more of like you know we are spiritual bodies in an earthly form so how are we taking care of that form how are we transmuting and transforming that form so that our light really does emanate and we're not hiding because I feel that there's a lot of dark spaces and places where we still might be hiding and um and and this last quarter moon going into the new moon is preparing us for that because we are um you know moving into the aries moon you know the aries moon is huge uh it's new beginnings it's bold it's beautiful and there may have to be you know it's like a birth of a baby so like there may have to be some you know still some birth canal pains that are going through in order to birth this new baby um, which is why in the divine feminine way it's always you know march february march where we start the new year so really it is the starting of the new year so we're almost at a close uh, i feel like there's so many things that just came out that were um really necessary that have been um you know just simmering in my consciousness that i am so glad i was able to share today so I'd like you to close your eyes right now. We're going to do a short healing to really allow ourselves to be honest with um, the darkness inside, the dark spaces and places that are um, that may be holding us back or that may be challenging us in our lives. And we may, may, may not have the answers yet. Um, so we're going to ask, the, ask God's source universe, the divine or archangels to assist us in that. So let's take a deep breath. Two more. (sighs) Calling in Holy Mother, Holy Father to assist us in this transformative energy of this last quarter moon into the Aries new moon on April 1st um, to put... um, a golden shield around us as we feel protected and loved and safe in this womb space 
of the divine energy to allow in the scent of jasmine and uh, lavender and sage to cleanse the energy within the womb space and to um, allow the simmering fire within our own sacral chakra to be um, both illuminated and to be um, released of anything, any archetypes, any um, habitual thought patterns, any fear that we may be burned at the stake to be released at this time. Smell that sage. Allow the scents to come into your um, nasal passages. The smell of the jasmine. The Louisa. The smell of the salt air of the beach. Cleansing waters. Just allow yourself to be ensconced in this golden light energy and allow that simmering fire in your sacral chakra to be um, aroused. Let it guide you to what needs to be released deep, deep in your womb space, in your chakras, in your root chakra, in that safety mechanism that your um, ego tends to hide in, let the light and the fire shine on it. I'm gonna say some light language now. this energy to bolster your solar plexus, to have that confidence that you can move through this, that you are supported with all of your soul family by calling them in, by stepping in to the, your fullness, feeling the hands of Mother Mary on your solar plexus, on your sacral chakra, on your root chakra and the energies of God's source universe totally leading you and connecting with your higher self. You are safe. Please repeat with me. I am safe. I am loved. I am whole. I am protected. Let's breathe that in to truly imprint that on our heart. And our bodies. I'm gonna close the space now. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being with me today, for witnessing yourself, for honoring your shadows and honoring your emotions as you, as we are moving through these challenging energies as we approach the new moon in Aries. Really honoring the moon for shining the light in this last quarter phase to assist us in this energetic cleanse. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Aho, and so it is. If you enjoyed this, please share it with your um, 
friends and loved ones. And if you'd like to join any of my programs, the link is in the detail below. details below. Go to gilanahemia.com for my quantum healing um, group programs and personal mentoring. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Namaste, Shanti Shalom.